Welcome back, dear friends. This is Lit E City, the channel of your choice for English literature, which tries to bring you the great important videos keeping in mind the coming exams. Here we are once again with our series Questions That Matter, in which we compile, in which we present those questions, writers, facts, works, which are bound to come in the coming exams. And today's topic deals with some important modern poems belonging to both European, American and English continent. Okay, the very first question is a very popular poem. The dwellings of our dead looks at the graves of the first generation of settlers in New Zealand. Who is the poet? Dear friends, this is a poem in which the poet or the narrator looks at the graves of those persons who have come from the Europe and settled there in New Zealand. Now they have passed away. So this is a very interesting poem which is generally considered to be part of post-colonial discourse. Our options are Arthur Adams, the second one is James K. Baxter, the third option is Alistair Campbell and the last option is Vincent O. Sullivan. All of these are those writers, those British writers who have later settled into New Zealand or then become diasporic writers. The correct answer for this question dear friend is Arthur Adams. Dear friend Arthur Adams, he wrote one novel Tussock Land and one significant volume of verse Maori Land and other verse. It is one of his greatest contribution to the New Zealand poetry before becoming the editor of the bulletin's red piece. The very popular last lines of the poem read like they come as lovers come all else forsaking the bonds of home and kindred proudly breaking they lie in splendor lone the nation of their making their everlasting throne you can see uh, the typical imperial tone the typical colonizing tone in these lines and that is why such poems are, uh, are put under the lens in post-colonial readings Dear friends, next question is from, we can say, Caribbean poetry. Poems are usually written in Jamaican Creole, incorporating a music beat and is often performed to an accompaniment of instrumental music. It's a, we can say, a very crazy and popular trend of poetry, uh, which is part of now American folk poetry, pop poetry, young poetry. And uh, you have to guess the name of this particular genre of poetry. Is it performance poetry? Is it poetry slam? Or is it dub poetry? And the last option is raga. All these are, in fact, performance poetry is an umbrella term. Rest of the options are very popular part of performance poetry, part of, we can say, uh, the pop culture or the subculture of American black. The correct answer for this question is dub poetry. Dear friends, dub poetry has become a tradition of popular poetry in the Jamaican and black British vernacular or what is called patwa, which is quite, uh, a type of a pidgin language. It was inaugurated by Mutabaruka and Oku Onuara. The, they both inaugurated in Jamaica and Linton Kwesi Johnson in England. It includes lyrics and narrative poems on subjects, including protest against racism and police brutality. So you can understand it. Dub poetry is also a part of resistance literature or we can say counterculture. Other leading dub poets include Michael Smith, Jean Binta Breeze and Levi Tafari. All these are very popular among uh, young audience among the youth. A very important uh, question is who owns America? A new declaration of independence. The very subtitle is here very uh, significant. A new declaration of independence. This landmark collection of essays can be best described as 
Uh, is it an American feminist manifesto? Is it a sequel to I will take my stand, the famous defense of the South, South America's agrarian tradition? Is it a call for black American movement? And the last option, a collection from LGBT activists. Though the question that matter series, uh, we are dealing with poetry. But here I am talking about this particular question, which is a collection of essays rather than poems. And it is very important one also. Dear friends, this particular uh, collection, Who Owns America, is actually a sequel to I Will Take My Stand. Dear friends, uh, this particular uh, I Will Take uh, My Stand in 1930. 12 Southerners, they all were very important and influential university scholars. They published a collection of essays under the title, I will take my stand, the South and the agrarian tradition. Now, who owns America? It was more broad. It included articles not only from the Southern America, but also from the North America. Alan Tate, who was one of the 12 Southerners, teamed up with Pulitzer Prize winning writer Herbert Agar and published 21 essays. Our Sister Killjoy, Reflections from a Black Eyed Squint by Amata Aidu is a prose verse novel depicting the thoughts and encounters of the young girl and the name of the protagonist, whose opinion is shaped by her encounter with the Western world. What is the name of the protagonist of this very popular and critically acclaimed work? Is it the, uh, the name of the girl is Kunli or is it Maria or is it Sissi and the last option is Ama. So uh, Our Sister Killjoy by Ama Ata Aidu is a work by this particular Ghanaian education minister which reflects the typical conflict between a black girl and uh, European white people. The correct answer is the name of the girl is Sissy. Dear friends, uh, this particular Killjoy, Our Sister Killjoy is the debut novel of Ghanaian author and former Minister of Education, Ama Ata Aidu. It tells a story of Sissi, a young African woman who goes to Europe to better herself and receive a proper European education. But in the process, she discovers the reality of colonization, its effect on the young Africans and how both European and Africans have been mistaught about the realities of race and racism in their everyday lives. Our fifth question is Fool in for the Forest, which owes much to the wasteland. Inspired a lot by the wasteland, it presents three figures, I, the conjurer, and the fool, Mazdin, as aspects of a single person. Who is the poet of this very innovative and popular satirical poem? Is it Hilda Doolittle, is it Amy Lowell, is it Ezra Pound, or is it Richard Aldington? As you may all be very much aware of the fact, all these uh, writers <coughs> belong to the Imagist movement. All of these have composed poems in a very modernistic tradition, and they have somehow influenced by or they influenced T.S. Eliot also in uh, his particular poetry, uh, poetic output. The right answer, a very important fact is that Fool in Forest, it is written by Richard Aldington. Dear friends, this is Aldington's first long poem. It was published in 1924 and it is subtitled of Phantasmagoria. It were, the work combines a variety of poetic forms and free verse. There is a shifting setting of the poem and the protagonist moves from Greece to the trenches of France during the, Second World, uh, during the First World War and finally back to London. So uh, in a typical manner of uh, uh, wasteland, it is also a poetic montage. 
Our next question is which among these is not a collection of original poems by Aga Shahid Ali. He is a renowned Kashmiri American poet. Aga Shahid Ali is a prominent name. He was he is he was basically Kashmiri Muslim poet who later relocated to America and published many of his important works. Rooms are never finished. The repels still hot. A walk through the yellow pages. The country without a post office. Dear friends, all these four are works by Aga Shahid Ali. But one among these is not collection of his original poems, but rather a translation of an eminent poet. And that is the Rebels Silhart. This is basically, dear friends, uh, the Rebels Silhart is translation of Faiz Ahmed Faiz, the great Urdu poet belonging to Pakistan. And the rest of the works, rooms are never finished, a walk through the yellow pages, the country without a post office, they all are collection of poems by Aga Shahid Ali. Is a study of suicide among writers and artists remembered now chiefly for its memoir of the last months of Sylvia Plath. And you have to tell the name of the book and this particular book presents a case study of suicide among the writers and artists. Is it the bell jar? Is it birthday letters? The silent women or the savage god? All these books, dear friends, are somehow related with Sylvia Plath and we will see uh, about them. But the right answer for this particular question is the savage god. This is the correct answer. Now, the savage god is a study of suicide and written by Alvarez, who was also, we can say, a modernist poet, a part of the movement. The rest of the book, the Belja, it is a very renowned, very popular work by Sylvia Plath. It is a novel. Birthday Letters, it is the one of the most uh, acclaimed collection of poems by Ted Hughes, who was husband of Sylvia Plath. The Silent Women by Janet Malcolm is a study of relationship between Sylvia Plath and Ted Hughes, in which she accuses Ted Hughes for the, for the suicide of uh, Sylvia Plath. The Instruction Manual is a famous poem in which the poet writing an instruction manual on the uses of a new metal drifts into a travelogue style reverie about the Mexican city of Guadalajara. Now, who is the poet? A typical ploy by the poet, he starts talking about something and then takes the imaginative route and reaches somewhere else. The, the options are John Ashbury, second one is John Ash, third one is Simon Armitage, and the last one is a R Ammons. All these are very, very prominent uh, post 50s American poets. And the correct answer, the instruction manual is a work by John Ashbury. Dear friends, John Ashbury was recognized as one of the greatest 20th century American poets. He has won number of prizes, almost all reputed prizes like Pulitzer Prize, National Book Award, Yale Younger Poets Prize, Bollingen Prize, Ruth Lilly Poetry Award, Griffin International Award, MacArthur Genius Grant. So basically you can understand if they talk about something, they talk about his the level of his popularity and the level of his, we can say, uh, mastery of his art. Which of his poems are then described as his Ars Poetica? And actually, it is a verse commentary on Shakespeare's The Tempest. Among these poems, we all know that W. H. Auden is a towering figure uh, in, after between the wars and even after the war. And many of his poems are considered to be the hallmark of modernist uh, tradition. Is it for the time being? Is it the sea and the mirror? Is it another time? Or is it the double man? 
all these are very popular collection and also uh, we can say the title or poems of these collections the right answer dear friend is the sea and the mirror these all are collection by wh arden only the sea and the mirror uh, is basically a commentary on the famous shakespearean play the tempest okay with this we come to the last question of the day which among these poetry anthologies is not associated with the new apocalypse is it the new apocalypse the white horseman the crown and the sickle or the poet stun obviously dear friends the new apocalypse is associated with this particular movement and the other two are the white horseman and the crown and the sickle so it is the poet stun which is not associated with apocalypse movement the apocalyptic movement or the new apocalypse uh, new apocalypse it was a loose amalgamation of british scottish welsh poets of 30s and 40s and uh, the name this particular name came from the anthology the new apocalypse uh, edited by j f henry and henry trees and then there were these two anthologies white horseman crown and sickle they all were basically writing in a very plain english very simple english poet stung it is edited by arden and garrett and they promoted this particular collection as anti academic anthology intended for schools that's all dear friends for today's session these 10 questions i hope would help you in your preparation some of them or uh, matter related with them is very definitely going to be asked in your coming examination so pay focus uh, keep supporting these channels and also give me your very very important uh, and worthy uh, suggestion regarding improvement of this channel thank you friends